In this episode, I want us to use the icons that we've created on the previous episode in our buttons. So let me copy paste the first row of buttons here. And ideally, I want us to simply add icon equals camera, for example. And then I want our buttons to automatically be prefixed with that icon. And I also want icons in button to work in disabled and small buttons. So let's add more rows to cover all of those use cases. Now let's implement this and make sure that these buttons are prefixed with a camera icon. So let's go to our base button component and we'll start by importing the base icon component. We'll also register the icon props as a string. And now we're ready to display our icon. So base icon. If an icon was provided, then show the icon that was provided. Okay, so as usual, we'll fill it with the current color and we'll give it a size of five. Next, we actually want the icon to sit on the left side of the text. So that means we need to make the button a flex container. And we'll make sure everything is centered by doing items center and align center. And let's also give a margin of two between the icon and the text. Okay, so that's a good start, but I'd like to improve a few things. First, I want the icon to be a little bit smaller for small buttons. So we'll do that by adding a dynamic class that we'll call icon size. And this is going to be defined as a computed property, which is going to return a size of five for normal button and a size of four for small buttons. The second thing I want to do is to give two colors to these icons by using the primary props. So if I go back to my icon and I add primary text green 500. Okay, now we can see what exactly gets affected by that props. The secondary color we're going to leave empty because I want it to be the same color as the text and that's what it defaults to. But the primary color, as you can see, we cannot give a unique value. It has to depend on the type of the button. So let's create another computed property called icon primary. For default buttons, I'm going to give the primary color a slightly lighter gray. So text gray 600. Okay, so this works fine for default buttons, but not the others. As you can see, the disable buttons could do with not having an extra color to the icon because that almost makes them legit button, if that makes sense. So we're just going to say if this button is disabled, then return nothing. Okay, so that looks more like disabled buttons. Now for the danger button, um, I'm going to give it a lighter red, 400. And for the primary button, I could give it a lighter blue, let's say blue, even 100. And that works, but the difference is not quite big enough. And if I increase that, let's say 300, then we can't really see the primary color anymore as it blends in the background. So I think it's just better to leave everything white on that case. So similarly to disabled, I'm just going to say if it's disabled or it's primary, then don't bother setting up a primary color. Now that our buttons are ready to accept icons, let's move on to the second part of this episode, which is to add a loading state to our buttons. In our paparazzi app, we're going to have a few operations which are going to 
be quite heavy and are going to take more than 500 milliseconds to proceed. So I think it's nice to have a state that when we click on the button, we have some feedback that lets the user know that we are processing their request. So let's go back to our app.view component and copy paste the first two lines. We're going to remove that event listener and add a new props called loading. And when we're loading, I simply want a cog icon to be spinning in the middle of the button. So let's go back to our base button and add that new props that we've just added. And let's add a new icon here, which will be icon cog, and it will only be displayed if we are in a loading state. As usual, let's give it the fill current class and let's give it a size. Uh, because we already have the icon size computed property, we're going to reuse it here. So when we're in the loading state, we don't want the content of the button to be displayed. One way to do it would be to add a VF to the content of the button and only display it if we are not in the loading state. But the problem with that is the size of the button, especially the width, is going to vary as you click on it. So typically a button that is loading will be much smaller than its original button. And that means when you click on a button to start an operation, the button will become small. And as soon as the operation finishes, it would become big again. And I don't really find that um, aesthetically pleasing. So the second option, which I prefer, is to add an overlay on top of the button with a spinning cog in the middle. So let me show you how we can do that. First, we'll wrap our cog icon in a div and we'll move the if condition to the div instead of the icon. Next, we need to make that div absolute and inset zero. And that means cover the entire space that you have available. And the space available is defined by the first ancestor, which has a relative position. So let's add relative to our button wrapper. And if I save this, you can see that the icon is now sitting on top of the button, like an overlay. And to prove you that the div that contains the icon is actually covering the entire of the button, let's add a green background. So now, all we have to do is replace that green background with the appropriate background based on the type of the button. And fortunately, we already have a computed property for that, which is called button type. So we'll do class button type. And that styles the overlay exactly like the button. So essentially, it's like we have a button on top of a button. One thing you might have noticed though, is that the background is escaping the rounded corners. And that's because we need to add overflow hidden in our button. And now that we've prepared our overlay, let's align our icon in the middle. So we'll do flex items center justify center. And by the way, this should be justify and not a line. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is every time we provide a loading props to a button, I want it to look like a disabled button because when you think about it, a button that is still processing a request should not look like it's still clickable. We'll do that by adding another computed property called is disabled. And that will return disabled or loading. Now all we need to do is use that is disabled computed property instead of using disabled directly. So let's copy this and replace disabled by is disabled here and here here, here, and here, and also here. 
Now, whilst I like the button to look disabled, I'd like the icon to stand out a little bit better. So we'll add our last computed property called loading icon. And that's going to define our primary and secondary classes that we want on our loading icon. So it will return an array where the first element uh, is the primary classes and the second element is the secondary classes. So we'll copy this, go back to our loading icon and say primary equals the first element of loading icon and secondary is the second element. Okay, so for the default button, we want text gray 700 for the primary and text gray 600 for the secondary. For the danger button, we want red 4 and let's say 6. And for the primary, we'll do blue 5 and 6. Okay, and before we wrap up, there is one last thing that needs to be done, and that is to make that icon actually spin. So for that, I've created two plugins called Animations and Keyframe and they are hosted on the same repository um, as the gradient plugin that we used before. So let's go to our Tailwind config file and we'll add two plugins. We'll add animations and we'll add one keyframe, keyframes slash spin. And that's a keyframe provided by the plugin that simply makes things turn around. So from zero degrees to 360 degrees. So now all we need to do is define that animation here. So animations spin. And that's the name of the class that we want to use in our HTML, followed by the keyframe. In our case, that spin will give it a duration of four seconds and make it linear infinite. And that will just make it loop at a constant speed. So now if I save that and go back to our button, and add the spin class on our icon. Yep, it's all working fine. And I promise that was the last thing we're going to do with our buttons. They're now all ready for our Paparazzi application. So to recap, we've created three types of buttons, which are default, danger, and primary, and they are available in a multitude of variants. We have the normal variants, the small variants, the disabled variants, the icon variance, which can also be disabled. And now the loading variance, which keeps the size of the original button by adding an overlay on top of it. Okay, so I think our base components are coming along quite nicely. The next few videos are going to be dedicated to form elements like input, select, and checkboxes.